Hi everybody, welcome back to Lafayette Systems. This is part two of a build series where we are building this rocket here, Diamond X. It's about one meter long, it weighs about one kilo in weight, and it uses four actively controlled aft fins to guide itself through the air. As you can see, I have one airframe in the back built there. This one has flown twice and both videos are up on the channel. And this is the second airframe that we're building. So we're gonna build a second copy of it, not only because eventually this one's gonna end up in the dirt, but because I'm gonna upgrade this one even further so they can fly with an additional first stage rocket booster. That lets us fly it higher and faster and lets us practice control at different regimes of flight. We built this airframe in part one of this build series. And so if you haven't seen that, definitely check it out right now. In this video, we're assembling all of the avionics, which are going to live in the very front of the rocket and do all of the guidance, navigation, and control tasks, and also initiate parachute deployment. So as you can see here, we have our primary flight computer. This is consisting of two flat black circuit boards. Very cool. We have three cameras. We have our telemetry radio unit. So this lets us send commands to the rocket and receive telemetry. We have our wishbone. This mechanically connects the parachute, which attaches here, to the rest of the avionics assembly and is kind of a unique design. So that lets us solve some load path issues. This is a single large CFPC, carbon fiber polycarbonate, 3D printed piece, and it holds all of the above. We then have our flight battery, our battery mount, and our GNSS antenna in this box here, and then a couple of other parts that hold everything together. We're also going to be assembling the raceway cables. There's a very large cable assembly that lives underneath these 3D printed uh, raceway shrouds. On the Block 2 version, it only has six wires in it. So there's four servo data lines and then servo power and ground to run all four of these servos in the back. When we run with a booster, we need a whole bunch more. We need lines to connect to the booster, other random IO to the booster. We're gonna need uh, pyro channels to separate the booster off explosively and then to fire the main rocket motor. And then we're gonna need even more servo data lines. This is one of the first booster prototypes here. It has a single fixed 38 millimeter motor here. And the idea is to fly with a high thrust motor to get this thing off the rail, and then a slow burning sustainer motor to let us practice control for longer periods of time. In the future though, I'm gonna be building a thrust vector control booster with no aft fins, but a motor that can be actively gimbaled around to steer this thing uh, straight from launch, and that way we don't even need a launch rail. Uh, but that one's going to require some more wiring and electronics, so I want to build this entire system out so that it can fly with the fanciest booster I can imagine, and that way it's easy for the system to grow. I have another video coming out on this channel very soon all about the flight computer, what chips are on it, what its capabilities are, and what requirements I had that drove those capabilities. So if you're interested in electrical engineering or the flight computer aspect of this project, make sure to check that one out too. So I've got all three of our main avionics assembly prints tentatively stacked together here. I haven't uh, screwed them in quite yet. And step one is gonna to be to assemble the wire harnesses that connect things like our telemetry radio and our cameras to the flight computer. The cameras are just connected via power and ground, so I can enable the cameras uh, remotely basically just by turning on their power. They draw something like 300 to 400 milliamps a piece. So I don't wanna have them running all the time. It draws too much power. And then the telemetry radio has got a four pin. It's got 3.3 uh, volts, ground, and then TX and RX. So uh, that's how the flight computer sends data to the radio. It sends it down to the ground station. So I will assemble those, and at least for the cameras, I'll solder them to the cameras, and then we'll get everything put in place and screwed together. Right, Momo? He's been a good lab kitty today. He's been very helpful. Good boy. Don't touch your tail on that. And here is our completed lower and middle avionics assembly. So you can see the middle one, we've got our circuit boards in place, both of them. We've got our servo and radio connectors in place. These are for servo power and ground. On the side, you can see three wires in the screw terminals. Those are a pyro positive and then are two pyro minus lines. We've got two more lines that are connected to these five pin connectors. These are the booster detect and booster IO lines and then a couple more servo connections which are just soldered in place because I don't have a useful connector to actually pull those PWM signals off of. So it's kind of a mess. I've bodged a lot of stuff together, but we have that all connected to our 18 pin connector here. And I'm trying a new technique where I'd put a, uh, this is just a giant heat shrink tube around that. And then I put a bunch of epoxy in the top and bottom to make sure that there's no stress on the leads that are soldered directly to this connector PCB. So this guy's done. 
our next steps are to assemble our upper avionics assembly with our camera. We also need to attach our radio and our wishbone, uh, which is right underneath here, to the lower avionics assembly, and then uh, mate those two with these four screws here. integrated avionics assembly. We've got a camera power wires connected. We've got our telemetry radio antenna installed. We've got our cameras in place, got a GPS antenna structurally hot glued together. Very nice. So the next step here is to connect it to the laptop, upload our flight code, and the flight code will start out with a self-diagnostic test, looking at all the different sensors and making sure that they can connect correctly. So we'll do that, make sure everything's soldered together and wired together correctly just on the AV bay. And then once that's all checked off, we'll connect it to the rest of the rocket and try to get those fins to move. So you see the rocket starting up, it's scanning its I squared C bus and it's seeing all of its sensors, very nice. Next thing it's gonna do is check that there's nothing on the flash memory, and then if there isn't, erase it, and get ready to write a bunch of new flight data to it. All right, flash memory's erased. Went through a self-test here, and it tested all of its sensors. We connected to GPS, very nice. It looks like it connected to all of its IMUs and everything. All right, now it's starting frame rate driven operations. Very good. Okay, that looks great, so now it's connected up to the rocket and make sure that the raceway connector here is working as intended as well. So the rocket is all integrated together. We've got a raceway cable connected here. And right now it's clearing its memory again. I've restarted the flight computer. And then after it checks its sensors, its inertial measurement units, then the first thing it does is it sends power to the servos and then it sends them to the neutral position. So we should see the fins move here in a sec. I don't expect them to be straight because I haven't set their neutral positions yet. We should see them move here. There we go, all right. So our fins are now energized, which is good. You can see we can't move them. There's a little tiny bit of backlash, but this is pretty good. So there's our fins. Next thing we need to do is make sure that we align these so their neutral positions have to be set correctly, and that's just a process I have to do manually. And then once that's done, we can connect it to the ground control software and actually start running uh, fin test and alignment sequences on it. Okay, so slightly different setup here. You can now see that the laptop is no longer connected to the rocket. The rocket's data link antenna, which is buried in here, is now communicating to this box here, which is my ground telemetry unit. So it's got a nice big omnidirectional antenna, the same XB radio, and then a version of an old flight computer, which translates the packets coming in from the rocket and then sends them to the ground control software. So this is what the ground control software looks like. This is written in processing, which is basically just Java. And I have a bunch of different data boxes here that list the rocket's position, velocity, and stuff like that. And then I have more detail here about its GPS position, which uh, is incorrect intentionally. Um, and then also the pyro channels, and then other things where we can give it waypoints to, to fly to. So right now we can see that the rocket is connected. This box here tells us our data link status, and it is strong. We're receiving about seven packets per second. And we can see we've received about 600 packets since the ground control software has been turned off. 
down here, we can see the battery current in milliamps, and we can also see the flight battery voltage. This is pretty low, so we're probably gonna wanna charge the battery before we do a whole lot more testing. It's temperature, and then the previous frame processing time, gosh, that's a mouthful. Um, so this is basically saying that the rocket took 5.7, or well now 11 milliseconds to process the previous frame. It should take 10. If it takes more than that, that's not great. If it takes less, that's awesome. So next thing we can do is we can calibrate its gyro and its magnetometer. This shows up in our event window as we're calibrating its inertial sensors. And this is gonna be a little bit off because it's lying sideways. So it's not gonna like the calibrations it generates, but that's fine. So now once that's done, we can vehicle safe. Very nice. Next thing we can do is fin alignment, control fin alignment. So now when I push these buttons, we're gonna change the fin positions and we should be able to align these fins manually. Now this process takes a little bit, so I'll get back to you guys when that process is done. Okay, so now that we got our fins nice and aligned, very pretty, the next thing that we can do is a fin test. So we can see we are in control state, control fin alignment. So we will click this check mark, turn turn to control disabled, and then we'll start a fin test. We see a fin test countdown starting here. We should see our fins do a little test sequence to make sure they're all moving in the proper directions. All right, there's our fins, looking very good. Next thing we can test is our cameras. So this is the power state for the cameras. We can see we can separately actuate a five volt MOSFET and a, in this case, VCC, so 8.2 volt MOSFET, but all the cameras are connected to five volts here. So if we click this enable five volts, boom, five volts on, and what we should see is, yep, there's a little camera LED blinking. So that means this camera is now recording the wall, very nice. And we can also see that our current draws much higher. Now we're at 700, 800 milliamps. So if I stop five volts, our cameras are now off. And now we're down to usually around 80 to 90 milliamps. So that shows just how much power the cameras draw. And that's why I turn on the cameras right before launch and I just leave them running. Now the last thing we're gonna do with Momo Observing is something called a GNC test. That's Guidance, Navigation, and Control. So what I'll do is I will pick the rocket up I will enable the GNC test, and then it'll switch to a mode where it pretends like it's flying through the air, you're in the way. And then I will move it around and you'll be able to see the fins moving. So let's start this, Momo. I'm in the middle of rocketing, buddy. I know, we don't need to complain, we don't need to complain. Okay, so let's try this. We're going to push GNC test. We can see a guidance test has appeared in our events and we're just gonna look at the fins. You can see the fins moving around like they would in flight. In this case, just controlling roll. Was that interesting? So using the GNC test feature, I can make sure that the control gains are set up correctly and that the rocket is correctly adjusting, um, you know, make sure the fins are going the correct direction in flight. And that's how I test that on the ground. So I've got the rocket vertical here and I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's pitching and yawing around. So first, if we pitch the rocket forward, we can see we now have a negative 30 degree pitch. And if I pitch the rocket back towards me, I now have a positive 30 degree pitch. Same thing, I can yaw the rocket to the left. We have a 30 degree yaw. And same thing if I yaw the rocket to the right, I now have a negative 30 degree yaw. Well folks, that's all we have to do for the avionics assembly for Diamond X Block 3. Next episode, we're going to be painting this bad boy and also working on the flight software and the ground control software to get integrated with its first stage booster.
We also need to amend the flight software so that it includes a couple of other events that it doesn't typically have in flight, like separating the booster and igniting the sustainer motor. And both of those need to be ground tested before we can fly. But for now, I'm gonna leave this project where it's at and we're gonna get ready to fly the other Diamond X, that one, very, very shortly. So lots of fun videos coming up soon. I really love these rocket projects, so I'm glad other people enjoy them as much as I do. So stay tuned for more videos coming up very soon. Thanks everybody.